You have by now learned the definitions of stability of equilibrium points of nonlinear time invariant systems. So, how do we analyze these Lyapunov of stability properties? How do we decide whether an equilibrium point is unstable or stable, and possibly asymptotically stable or exponentially stable? All the definitions are expressed with respect to the solution as a function of time t. So, if we have an analytical expression of the solution, then we can use the definitions to analyze the stability properties. However, as we discussed in the video about the differences between nonlinear and linear systems, we're generally not able to find an analytical solution for nonlinear systems. In other words, we're generally not able to find x as a function of time t. So, what do we do then? Through the pendulum examples illustrating the stability definitions, we saw how, when we have a phase portrait available, we can use the stability definitions to evaluate whether an equilibrium point is stable or unstable, or possibly asymptotically stable. And also, in the video about second-order time invariant systems, you learn how to perform a local analysis to determine the qualitative behavior near an equilibrium point. And we saw that as long as the real part of the eigenvalues of the linearized system matrix is non-zero, then the phase portrait of the linearized system is topologically equivalent with the phase portrait of the original nonlinear system, locally, that is, close to the equilibrium point. Since the behavior is topologically equivalent, also the stability properties are the same. So, if the equilibrium point is a stable node or a stable focus, then the equilibrium point is locally exponentially stable. If the equilibrium point is an unstable node, a saddle point, or an unstable focus, then the equilibrium point is unstable. This result only holds for two-dimensional systems, though. What if the system state has another dimension than two? This topological equivalence between the behavior of a nonlinear system and its linearization and the corresponding relationship between the stability of the equilibrium point of a nonlinear system and that of the linearization about this equilibrium point can fortunately be generalized to systems of any dimension. And this is what Lyapunov's indirect method does. Lyapunov's indirect method, which is also called Lyapunov's linearization method, holds for nonlinear systems of any dimension. Note that the vector function f needs not only to be locally Lipschitz, as for the stability definitions, but it has to be continuously differentiable, which makes sense since the first order derivative has to exist for us to linearize the system. We follow the same procedure as when doing a local analysis. First, we linearize the system about the origin, obtaining a linear system with the system matrix A is the Jacobian of the vector function evaluated at the equilibrium point x being zero. Then secondly, we find the eigenvalues of the system matrix. And since the system is n-dimensional, there will be n eigenvalues. If all the n eigenvalues have negative real parts, then the equilibrium point is locally asymptotically stable. In the two-dimensional case, this corresponds to the equilibrium point being a stable node or a stable focus. If there exists an eigenvalue with positive real part, then the equilibrium point is unstable. And in the two-dimensional case, this corresponds to the equilibrium point being an unstable node, a saddle point, or an unstable focus. And if all eigenvalues have non-positive real parts, and there exists an eigenvalue with a zero real part, then this method gives no conclusion. The equilibrium point of the linearized system is then a center in the two-dimensional case, but the equilibrium point of the original nonlinear system can be unstable, stable, asymptotically or exponentially stable. We just do not know from this method of analysis. 
Actually, corollary 4.3 makes it possible to achieve an even stronger conclusion for the first case. It says that if all the n eigenvalues have negative real parts, then the origin is locally exponentially stable. So we can replace this first line here by this. Why this is not already included in theorem 4.7 is probably because the converse theorems that are needed to prove corollary 4.3 have not been presented before theorem 4.7. The great thing about this method is that it is simple to use. The drawbacks are that the method is not always conclusive and that it only gives local results. We cannot find out whether the origin is globally asymptotically or exponentially stable using this method. Consider the nonlinear system here. The parameter a is a constant parameter and we do not know its value or its sign. Regardless of the value of a, this system always has an equilibrium point at the origin. If you want to practice finding equilibrium points, you should pause the video and find the equilibrium points of the system now. What you will find then is that if a is a positive constant, then, in addition to the equilibrium point at the origin, there are two additional equilibrium points in plus minus the square root of a. But we are not interested in these two equilibrium points now, we are only interested in the equilibrium point at the origin. What I want you to do now is to pause the video and then use Lyapunov's indirect method to analyze the stability properties of the origin. First, we check whether the system satisfies the condition of theorem 4.7. This is the f function. It maps the whole state space R1 to a scalar value and it is continuously differentiable Specifically, it is a polynomial, and its derivative with respect to x is another polynomial. So the first order derivative exists, and it is continuous in x. This means that we can use Lyapunov's indirect method to analyze the stability of the equilibrium point at the origin. And remember that if we were to analyze the stability of any of the two other equilibrium points for the case where a is positive, we would define the error variable to shift this equilibrium point to the origin. The first thing to do is to linearize the system about the origin. The derivative of f with respect to x equals a minus 3x squared. And when we substitute x equals 0, then this is a. So the linearized system is x dot equals a x. Secondly, we find the eigenvalues of the system matrix. The dimension of the system is 1, so there is only one eigenvalue, and this is lambda equals a. The stability property of the origin will thus depend on the value of a. If a is negative, then the origin is locally asymptotically stable. By theorem 4.7, and from corollary 4.3, we know that it's actually locally exponentially stable. If A is positive, then the origin is unstable. And if A equals 0, then we cannot conclude anything about the stability of the origin using Lyapunov's indirect method. So if the system equation is x dot equals minus x cubed, then Lyapunov's indirect method does not give a conclusion about the stability of the origin. If we have a closer look at the system equation here, we see that when x is positive, then the derivative of x being minus x cubed 
is negative, meaning that x will decrease towards zero. And when x is negative, then the derivative of x is positive, meaning that x will increase towards zero. So we would expect the origin to be asymptotically or exponentially stable, but we need another method to actually prove this. The most widely used method for nonlinear stability analysis is Lyapunov's direct method, which you will learn in a little while. Can we say anything more about the stability at this point before learning Lyapunov's direct method? Having a closer look at corollary 4.3, we see that there is actually an equivalence between all eigenvalues being in the left half plane and the origin being locally exponentially stable. When all the eigenvalues of the system matrix A have negative real values, we say that the system matrix is Hurwitz. The equivalence implies that if the eigenvalues are not strictly in the left half plane, then the origin actually cannot be exponentially stable. So going back to our example, by corollary 4.3, if A is negative, then the origin is locally exponentially stable. And if A is identically zero, meaning that we have x dot equals minus x cubed, then the origin cannot be exponentially stable. So the strongest stability property that we may hope for in this case is asymptotic stability. And when you have learned Lyapunov's direct method, you will be able to prove that the origin is actually asymptotically stable and not only locally but globally asymptotically stable.